Hello and welcome to another Raggy's Beers, Wines and Spirits review. Today is the fifth video. Uh, it's on Sunday so you won't probably see it till Tuesday or Wednesday because um, I'm catching up. I, I posted one a day last week and I probably did two. Um, I mean it's just a Sunday, you know. I've done two homebrew videos, two wine reviews because I had to because I opened the bottles. And now a cider review. So this is Gallipet. And it's a four and a half percent French cider, and uh, I think I got it from Retro's. Um, so it says here, Galipette is a fine French cider of pure and vivacious fruit, made from one hundred percent fermented apple juice or pure juice, whatever that means. The natural taste, aroma, and colour of the apples are intact in every bottle, every round bottle of Galipette. The name in French. Is the word for somersault, somersault a forward world? Yeah. I can't, what it likes. I can't get the chuffing lid off. No, bloody hell. Aha. Uh -huh. Do it the opposite way. Must be an Irish bottle. Right. So, it says here, crafted according to side traditions dating back centuries, Gallipet is pressed from cultivated cider apples, hand-picked from the lush green orchards of northwest France. It is made locally with pride and patience to satisfy the modern taster. Free of gluten and added sugar, Gallipet is available as a refreshing brute and the naturally sweeter Biologique. This is the brute version. So, gold in colour, good carbonation and lacing, as you would expect from any cider. Not much of a head. On the nose. Oh, wow. Strong, strong apple. Wow. Gives Strombo a good smack in the mouth, I tell you. Whew. So, Gallipet Brut is made from 100% fermented apple juice. Uh, never from concentrate. It's prepared with... Pr uh, Golden coloured, clear and slightly sparkling, Gallipet Brut has an unmistakable scent of rich apple and a dry taste of full of lively fruit. Right, that's enough of that. And if you can hear the bubbling in the background, uh, behind these shoulders here, I've got a pure juice wine and a stout kit on the go. First day, and with this bit of heat this afternoon, it, it's getting them going, which is what we need, you know. So, um, apple on the taste, four and a half percent is obviously not the strongest uh, cider in the world. Oh. Got a real strong apple taste though, you know, it's uh, got a good twang to it. I'm really going for it in the background. Wait till I put this strawberry syrup into the stout. Hopefully then. Just pour it in and just see what it does. See if it, all that syrup, it should really, uh, you know, get it going. But I'm not going to do it until it's a couple of days old because uh, two or three days old. Because one, I don't want to lose all the strawberry taste, and two, it helps get rid of some of the sugar. Because obviously, a litre and a half of syrup added to that mix behind me is going to make it very sugary. But the yeast will burn a lot of the sugar out. Hopefully, just leaving a nice strawberry taste to complement the stout. Oh, I have that. It just tastes rancid, but you know, one never knows. So, lovely Sunday afternoon, and uh, hot tub's nearly ready to get in, and it's lovely and warm, you know. Got to make most of these weekends where it is nice, because we're going to get the crap soon, aren't we, you know. It's not going to stay nice for much longer. I just read a thing on the internet where, a news post where it says, Beast of the East is coming back in January, a long range weather forecast. These twats can't 
predict the weather properly a few days in advance. How they can do it for three months in advance. I think it's somebody, um, you know, it's all, all about making a news article into, you know. It's like every time a, a roller coaster breaks down on a lift hill and people are evacuated off. It's a major issue now. You know, some woman's been in the park seven hours and she was stuck on there for ten minutes and and uh, it's a major news article. You think, oh, God's sakes, you know, pack it in. So there's yeah, some fine um, carbonation. You can see the bubbles on the bottom of the glass. And then every now and again you see a big bubble floating up and uh, really strange. Let's see if it shows you. Yeah, just about see it on the camera. So yeah, real traditional um, cider. This is the brute version, not the sweet version. God, God knows what the sweet version is like, because this is sweet enough as it is. But this is naturally sweet, whereas the sweetened version, obviously, they've added a bit to it. But whew. Now, I drank some wine earlier, so um, I had to do two wine reviews because I'd already opened the bottle, so I could not, not, got not uh, chucking wine away, you know, that's sacrilege. Um, so I had to do two round reviews, but uh, I really shouldn't be doing a cider review, but, you know, hey -oh, I just fancy doing a review. I suppose really I could go and sit down and watch a film on TV, that'd be good, wouldn't it? So, yeah, all about the, all about the apple, apples in this. For me, very traditional, um, apple-based cider. Um, as traditional ciders go, yeah, it's okay, you know, it is it is what it is. Four and a half percent, not exactly in the strong range. Uh, the bottles, uh, it's like one of them, you know, them little sets you get at Sainsbury's in them, where you get 12 little bottles and they're all, you know, and that's very French of them. The French seem to do a lot of that in their beers. Um, we used to sell two or three different versions at Sainsbury's when I was there. So, you know, it's, a, it's something that you see quite a bit of. So the stout there, bubbling away like a, like a salt. Although this is a bit more subtle, the prune juice. Prune juice wine. Am I going to regret it? Mm. Yeah. I think when the first time I have a glass, I make sure it, I'm, I'm, on, I'm at home for that day, and then just in case it uh, becomes an issue later, you know. I mean, it may well be the nicest um, wine I've ever tasted. You never know. You never know the wines. So, golden in colour. Uh, good carbonation lace, not much of a head. Massive apple aroma, probably the strongest apple aroma I've had on any um, cider. In the taste, all about the apples. Uh, you know, it's just a traditional apple cider. Um, it will probably please the more the generation that like the traditional over the fruit cider generation. I'm not sure the fruit cider lovers would really, uh, you know, be happy drinking that. Uh, four and a half percent. It appears as both categories, really. You know, both the fruit and traditional. So out of five, right to be critical. Whilst it was okay, it didn't really float any boats for me. With traditional ciders, I, I like them to. You know, all I got was strong apple. I didn't get a difference in flavour apples. You know, greens and reds. Um, I didn't. You know. Oh my God, my shoulder. Um, it's like a strongbow of the French, you know, it's like a French strongbow to me, you know, if I'm being honest. Uh, it was okay, but nothing that floated me boat, really. Out of five, then, I'm going to give it a 4.0 out of five. So, whilst it is a good score for a cider, it's, uh, it's not up there with the ones that really, you know, really float the boat. All right. And that's stuff for this review. Thanks for watching. See you soon.